like to spend a little bit of time today talking about hill running. Not the multiple benefits there are to be had from adding in a regular hill session to your running week, but actually talking about the, the way in which you execute those sessions. In terms of the benefits, that really depends on how you, uh, how you structure the session. So I like to use my hill reps for building strength endurance and focusing on form. So two different types, either from the strength endurance point of view doing lots of long steady work on hills, but focusing on form, actually breaking it down almost to a point where I'm, I'm doing some short sharp drills on hills. So I want to focus on the latter today in this video. I want to really look at not what you're doing in your hill sessions, but how you're doing it. Okay, so how you're executing each and every one of those reps. From a technique point of view, there are some really common flaws that we'll see in runners, um, and it's very much to do with the way in which they carry themselves as they're going uphill. So yes, we need to look at things like posture, carrying those hips high. Yes, we need to look at how that landing foot's um, managing to strike the ground. Not Again, much like on the flat, not overstriding, landing that foot close to underneath a, a flexing knee. But actually, one of the big mistakes people make, one of the common flaws we see, is actually how the swing leg travels. We see so frequently from the point at which the, the rear leg leaves the ground, it's all knee drive. Pushing the knee forward, or sorry, not pushing, driving the knee through, using these hip flexors, using these quads to fairly, much, uh, fairly well dominate the movement, rather than getting these hamstrings working to pick the foot up underneath you a little bit, shorten up the, this lever from the hip, get you working with a, a nice, short, efficient lever, but also offload the amount of work that these hip flexors and quads have to do to bring you into this, this knee up position, which is the position we need to get on, get into to get onto the next stride. Without this hamstring activity, without getting these muscles at the back of the thigh working to pick the foot up and help you onto the next stride, you're essentially overworking these hip flexors and these quads to pull you through. Particularly muscles like rectus femoris, little TFL, iliopsoas as well, having to work to drag that long leg through underneath you. Now, there's no coincidence that we see runners who don't get this hamstring activation, don't pick the foot up, essentially, as they're running uphill. They're the guys who we'll see talking about the feeling that as, as soon as they just do any sustained work uphill, it's quads, hip flexors that start to feel heavy. They start to feel like doing all the work. All of a sudden, there's a correlation. Uh, I certainly see a correlation between people who are running in that knee drive focused manner uphill and tightness through the anterior hip, tightness through your ITB, tightness through your quads which can affect obviously what's happening around the knee but also around pelvic position. So people who potentially could be open, opening themselves up to knee related problems, lower back problems, hip problems. Now very simple in terms of making that change in, uh, in terms of a cue to think about, yes we think about holding the hips high much like we do when we're running on the flat. Yes, we think about landing that foot in the right position, much like landing on the flat. So again, we need to keep a nice steady high cadence. We need to keep nice short contact time. But the key is to think about lifting that foot. Get that foot, not, not like a drill, so not to the point where you're feeling that you're really snapping your heel up towards your bum. Although actually, in terms of using that as a drill, it's quite a good one. But just feeling the difference between running with essentially a kind of a shuffling gait, driving the knee forwards, but not really picking the foot up, versus actually actively lifting the foot just a little bit. Obviously the height you lift the foot is dependent on the speed you're traveling, also depends on the, the, the incline of the hill, and that will also help determine stride length. So we're after that nice little trade-off between stride length and stride frequency. We want to keep the turnover quite high, the stride frequency, the cadence quite high, and at the same time, we want to make sure that we're covering enough ground without overstriding. So we don't want to throw the foot out in front of us. Instead, we want to get this nice little lift up underneath to get the stride length there. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, give it a go. Let me know how you get on. Comments. Cheers.